from Orlando, Florida. It's the Cube. Covering SAP Sapphire Now 2018. Brought to you by NetApp. Welcome to theCUBE, I'm Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend and we are in Orlando, Florida at SAP Sapphire Now 2018. We're in the NetApp booth, really cool. SAP Sapphire is an enormous event. This is like the 25th year they've been doing it and uh, it's been really interesting to learn, Keith, about SAP and how they have really transformed and one of the things that's critical is their partner ecosystem. So we're excited to welcome back to theCUBE, a CUBE alumni, Paul Young, who is the director of SAP Go-To-Market from Google Cloud Platform. Paul, it's nice to see you. Uh, thanks. So, what is the current news with uh, Google and SAP? So, you know, I think we're making a major push into the SAP market. I think the, the yesterday's announcements are, we also we have our four terabyte HANA server online, but we also brought up, um, capacity all the way up to 20 terabytes. So we basically can handle pretty much all the customer base at this point. So on the one hand, that's good. Um, there is, however, a lot of other stuff we're doing in the AI space, in the joint engineering space with SAP, and, uh, and a lot of work we're doing in the, um, making it a lot easier for SAP customers to adopt the cloud, right? Uh, and, and beyond just what's happening a lot in the market right now, which is, you know, about 80% of the customers who, who move an SAP system to the cloud just do straight lift and shift. And so there's no form of momentum with that, it's just ticking the box you're in the cloud. Um, we're doing a ton of work in engineering um, on our own and with SAP right now to make that a, a, a much more valuable journey for the customers. So uh, yeah, the, the, I don't wake up in the morning at Google and think, what am I <laughs> going to do today? It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, there's a lot of stuff going on. So Paul, let's not be shy. We've had you on the queue before, yeah. and you're, you're an SAP alum. And as you look out at the hyperscalers, the big cloud providers, SAP more or less has a reference architecture for how to do cloud, how to do SAP in a hyperscaler cloud. Yep. But it's not just about that base capability. When I, when I talk to my phone, I love asking Google questions. Yep. When I look at you know, capabilities like AI and TensorFlow and machine learning, that gets me excited just in general. What, as you looked out at the hyperscalers, what excited you about Google in specific as you, when you were at SAP, you worked with Fall 3. So what's so exciting about Google? I did, I joke internally, I was, I was a customer of SAP for seven years. I did 20 years at SAP. And, uh, and yeah, and, and then woke up one morning and, and, and decided to go to Google. <laughs> and I, I do, I get this question a lot on the, yeah, the, the, my conversation always is it, it wasn't based on the cafeteria food. It's okay, <laughs> right? There were, there were other things that drove me across. It's interesting because in my last role at SAP, I, I was working with all three of the hyperscalers. And one of the questions I always got from SAP people is, well, they're all just the same, right? right. And when you actually work with them, you discover they are different, and that's no disrespect to anyone, but they approach the world differently, they all have different business models. And, uh, and the, the Google thing that really put me is the, the, the kind of engineering and the future focus was just tremendous, right? The, the stuff that Google could do was, was immense. And so, uh, like I said, I'll jump forwards to the future and then we'll, we'll come back. But just, if you look at the investments Google was making in AI and machine learning, a lot of the stuff we wrote out at Google I.O. with the, the you know, custom built TensorFlow computers that can just do amazing performance. Great on its own, but it's got to be applied, right? Right. So, so there's an example actually we built with Deloitte. It's uh, Deloitte's doing the demonstration for it. But just to give you an example of where we think the future is, um, we built a model in, in, in AI where we have, we basically took invoices and we taught um, the AI system to do data entry in SAP. So that's not an interface. We didn't say, hey, here's an invoice and here's all the fields and we map them all across and here's ETL and here's all the things we do, right? And here's all the interface mapping. We literally said, imagine you were an AP processor, how do you enter an invoice? And you give it data and you give it invoices and it spends a lot of time doing really stupid things, trying to put addresses in the number fields and everything else. And then suddenly it works out how to enter an invoice. And at that point, it knows how to enter an invoice and then what you do is you give it more and more invoices and more and more different structures and it learns how to what an invoice is and it learns how to process that. And then suddenly it can do complete data entry, right? So we built that as a model. This is the sort of thing Google does just to test the limits. Um, Deloitte came along and said, well, that's really cool. Could we actually take it and run it as a product? Uh, and so Deloitte now has that and they're, they're engineering it further out where literally you can give it any invoice 
it will, it's not OCR, it will look at the invoice and it will work out that it is an invoice, where all the bits you need are from it, it will then work out how you would do data entry on that into an SCB system, and it will enter the invoice. That's a future world where, um, I know SCB's already launched AI around doing three-way match, interesting. We're talking about a future world where your, your entire accounts payable department is a Gmail inbox, hmm. where they mail you invoices that you've never seen before, but we're able to understand what a vendor is, guarantee it's a vendor, guarantee it's not fraud checked, and do the data entry completely automatically. That is a massive new world, right? And that's just a tiny little bit of what we can do at Google. We have, a, just very quickly, also, we have a demo running on the booth where we have TensorFlow looking at um, your, ex, your ex pharmaceuticals, right? right. We have, a, we have a, a demo running on the booth uh, which is a replica of something we're actually running at customers, where we have a camera reading pharmaceutical boxes as they go past. So they're, they're pink colors in this case. But it, it doesn't just look at the box and say, I count one box. It reads the text on the box. And it reads the text on the box because it knows from SCB what's supposed to be manufactured. And it comes back and says, well, am I putting double strength pills in single strength boxes? Is this box legal? Have I been sent the correct box? Is, it, is, you know, is the packaging correct? It also knows what a good box looks like and it learns what a damaged box looks like and damaged packaging looks like and it knows how to reject them. And again, that level of technology where we can monitor all of your production lines and give you guarantee quality in pharmaceuticals or anywhere else, Tell me six months ago anyone even imagined that was possible. We're doing that right now, right? That that ability to work with SCP, because it's all integrated with SCP, we're doing deep level education. Right? That ability to deliver that sort of capability at the speed we deliver it at is world changing, right? Wow, you know, the, one of the things that I just kept imagining as you were going through the description of the invoicing, I actually was on a run the other day. I'm, I'm a small business owner, uh, and these things are troublesome. Like, you get in an invoice, and I'm thinking, you know, I got to deal, my uh, my wife does the uh, accounts, uh, payable accounts receivable. I'm like, there has to be a way to automate. Get, but then I thought about just those challenges. Like, you get one person sends an invoice, that the invoice is at the bottom right-hand corner, the, the invoice number is on the bottom right-hand corner, uh, the amount due, et cetera, et cetera. Just really silly questions that AI should be, AI machine learning should be able to deal with. Uh, Bill McDermott yesterday on stage said that AI should augment human capability and that's a great example of how AI augments human and, capability. And it doesn't, in the AP example, it doesn't do 100% correct all the time. Right. It knows when it's wrong. In the example of Dolly Runs, you'll see it comes up and says, the date's wrong here, I need to fix it. So it's taken the, it's taken the menial work out of the process and it's letting people really add value in. But it's also a great example of the cloud at work and what it's supposed to do, right? And again, if all you do is take traditional SAP and drop it in the cloud, you're just running in a different place. If you get to a world where with Google, we we don't expose your data to everybody else, but we understand what the world's invoices look like and we have that knowledge and we make the entire world more efficient by having the model know how to work, that's a radically better place, right? And that's, 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 there's just never been that value prop before. And that's, it's an incredibly exciting thing to wake up in the morning and think that's what we do, right? So Lisa, in the industry, we have this term that data has gravity. And I think it's fair to say, after this week, we can say that processing, technology, compute has gravity. It's, we, we uh, had another guest on that said that they use a process and a technology and solution. And one customer works out fine, and another customer, not the same results. It's this complexity, it's this kind of gushy part of technology that is just not easy to apply across, across companies. So, so the other part really quickly that I want to talk about is, you know, this isn't just about AI, right? It's not just about the future. I mean, one of the key, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm a long-term SCB customer, I work with a lot of customers. Everybody wants to get to the cool bit, you know, I, I, I always used to joke internally, everybody wants to eat candy, they've got to eat vegetables first, right? And so you, you, we've got to get you across. Or you can candy the vegetables. Well, whichever way. Okay. Uh, you've got to eat both <laughs> at some point, right? So, um, so look, just getting customers into the cloud becomes one of the challenges. It's one of the other areas where we're really applying engineering. So um, three weeks ago, we bought Velostrata as an example. Velostrata is an amazing company. Um, what Velostrata does basically is that it's a plug into VMware. You drop it into VMware and it watches your SCB systems running. Um, it profiles them and it works out what size capacity you're going to need in the cloud. 
Hmm. Um, at the point where it's then got enough information, it'll, 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 count, it'll basically ping you and say, hey, I, I don't know I have enough information. Do you want exactly the same performance at lowest price in the cloud, or do you want better performance? Here's two configurations. Pick the one you want, give it your Google user ID and password. It will build the security, build the application servers, and begin a migration for you automatically. Um, depending on the timing, depending on the size of the box, between 30 minutes and two hours later, you will have a running version of your SAP system in the cloud. Um, never been done before at that speed and performance. The way it works, basically, it's a, bit, a little bit of magic, but it knows how much, what the minimum amount of data we need to ship across to run SCP. It knows where all the data is hidden on the blocks on the disk that SCP needs to run, and it just ships that first, and then it fills in the gaps afterwards um, with a repair mechanism. So from there, um, on the one hand, you could do lift and shift, and frankly, our competitors have been using it to do lift and shift in the past. It opens up a ton of potential, right? For a bunch of customers, we can replicate their production boxes in real time and give them 30 second RPO, RTO in, in high availability. Like that, done. Um, but inside that, I can now um, take that replicated image and I can run um, upgrades on it, I can run tests on it, I can run QE rebuilds. Where you, because of the Google pricing model, you don't pay me in advance, you pay me in arrears for only the compute time that you use. So you want a, a QA system, you've got two days worth of work to rebuild it, don't shut down your QA system, pay me for two days, rebuild it, and you're done. Or, we have, we've integrated it directly into the SCP upgrade tools. So you can pipe across your system to us and we will immediately do a test upgrade for you into S4 HANA or ECC NASPAC 8 or BW on HANA, whatever you want. I have a customer in Canada um, who, who really jumped from ECC 6 and NASPAC 5 to S4 HANA um, using an earlier version of the tools um, in 72 hours with a lot of gaps and look in between. We reckon we're going to crush that down to under 24 hours. So under 24 hours, we can you can literally click on an SCB server and we will not just bring you to the cloud, but we will upgrade you all the way to the latest version. And we, we have all the components, we've done it, we're pushing that through, right? And so that, what we're doing now is taking the hard work and, and, and automating that so we can get to the really cool stuff in the AI side, right? That's, I mean, again, this is where all of us, all the hyperscalers host, uh, you know, SAP systems. We want to do something that's better than that, right? We want to make it easy to get there, but we know that in order to justify what you do, we're on a seven-year roadmap to S4 HANA, right? So we want to make it really easy to do that, and we want to make it incredibly easy to add in AI and all the other technologies along the way. That's at a and a pricing model that nobody will beat, right? And that's that's a pretty cool place to be. I'm, I'm mighty glad to be at Google Cloud. I can tell by your energy. There you go. So, ease of use, everybody wants that. You talked about just the example of invoices, how they can vary so dramatically, and you know, whether you're a small business owner to a large enterprise, there's so much complexity. And, and in fact, that was one of the things that was talked about, I think it was this morning, when, yeah, uh, when Hasso Platner was even talking about naming conventions and how customers were starting to get confused with all of the different acquisitions SAP has done. So, AI, what Google is doing with AI on SAP sounds like a, a huge differentiator. So tell us, as we wrap up here, what makes, you know, in a nutshell, Google different than the other hyperscalers that SAP partners with, and specifically, what excites you about going to market with SAP? Um, at the base level, you know, Google's just on a different scale from everybody, right? We are effectively 25% of the internet. If you look at our, 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 our own assets, um, we we own Dark Fiverr that's equivalent to about 4% of the entire capacity, oh, sorry, four times the entire capacity of the internet, right? My, so my ability to deliver to those customers at scale and at performance levels, just un, unchallenged in this space. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, Google clearly has excelled in a lot of different areas. It's incredibly exciting to bring that to, to SAP and carry it through. But you're right, the, 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 the value add ultimately isn't just the, hey, I can, I can run you and I can run you better, right? The value add is, so March we announced direct integration between HANA and, and, and Google BigQuery. When you talk about BigQuery, right? Massive data sets that you can now bridge to HANA. If you're a retailer, just as one last example, um, I can now join all the ad tech data Google has, so I can tell you all the ads you're currently running in Google, what's being watched, what's being viewed, anonymized in clusters, so you can't tell the individual consumers, but I know that data, and, and directly loaded to BigQuery, and I can join it to SAP, so I can now say, you are advertising in this area that's being clicked on, but I know you don't have the inventory to actually support the advertising, so I mm. want you to move advertising somewhere else, right? And so I can do that manually right now. When I add 
add an AI to that, the, the potential is, is incredible, right? We, we've only just started, and so yeah, no. And next time I'm on the Cube, uh, uh, we'll see where we're at, but it's, uh, it's a fun place to be. It so sounds you. like it. Speaking of next time, you guys have a conference coming up, Google? Uh, next is coming up at the end of July. Uh, yeah, it's uh, we have a lot of announcements uh, through probably the rest of the year, right? There's a lot of stuff going on as we come to massive scale in the SAP space. So yeah, anyone who's interested in the stuff, uh, especially even if you're just interested in the AI stuff, Google Next is the place to be. So yeah, it sounds like it. I'm, I'm expecting some big things from that based on what you talked about and how enthusiastic you are about being at Google. Paul, thanks so much for joining Keith and me back on theCUBE and we look forward to talking to you again. Thanks. Thank you for watching theCUBE. Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend at SAP Sapphire 2018. Thanks for watching.